if you look at a carpenter, they have a uh, toolbox, and a dentist has his has his other uh, drills. And in our era, uh, and the type of work that most of us are doing, one of the most important tool is, is to give and re receive feedback well. Humans have been talking about feedback for centuries. Uh, in in fact, uh, Confucius, way back in 500 BC, talked about how important it, it is to be able to say difficult messages well. But honestly, most of us are not really good at it. Uh, so what's going on? The way that most people give uh, uh, feedback falls under uh, two camps. Either they are very indirect and soft so that the listener's brain doesn't capture it to be a feedback or it or uh, it is very uh, direct that it lets the listener to go into a defensive mode so there's this part of the brain called amygdala and it's scanning at all times to figure out whether the me um, message has a social threat attached to it so with that, we will uh, move forward to defensiveness and we will move backwards in retreat. And what happens is the feedback giver starts to dysregulate as well. And it doesn't have to be that way. A team had um, uh, visited many companies and they asked every person in that, uh, uh, who, who among them is a great feedback giver and uh, anybody who's named again and again they actually brought them to their labs to see what they were doing differently and they came up with a four part formula so here we go the the first one as they call it micro yes Great feedback givers uh, begin their feedback by asking a simple question to let the other person know that a feedback is coming. Uh, an example is, uh, do you have uh, five minutes to talk about how the last conversation went? So these uh, kind of uh, qu uh, questions does two things. It's a pacing tool. And the second thing is, it uh, creates a moment of buy-in. Uh, I, I can say yes or no to that yes or no question. And with that, I, I get a feeling of autonomy. So the second part of that feedback formula uh, is your data point. Many people use these uh, blur words, uh, words like uh, uh, that make that are not specific. For example, uh, if uh, if I say you shouldn't be so defensive, or um, you could be uh, be more proactive. When we uh, uh, what, when we see uh, uh, good feedback givers give their uh, feedbacks, uh, what they do differently is they uh, convert these uh, blur words into solid data points. So instead of saying you aren't reliable, uh, we would say uh, you said you didn't get that, uh, you said you, uh, you would get that mail to me by 11 and it hasn't happened yet. So this uh, kind of directly points to the problem and addresses it. The third part of the feedback formula is the impact statement. Here, you name exactly how that data point impacted you. So for example, I might say, because I didn't get the message, I was blocked on, on my work and couldn't move forward. Or I uh, really like, uh, liked how you added those stories because it helped me grasp the concept faster. So it will, it will give you a sense of purpose and meaning and logic between the points, which is what the uh, brain 
really clear. So the fourth part of the feedback formula is a question. Great feedback givers wrap their feedback message with a question. They'll ask something like, well, how do you see it? Or uh, this is what I think uh, we should do. So what, what do you think ab uh, ab about it? What it does uh, create is a commitment rather than a compliance. It makes the conversation uh, no longer be a monologue and it becomes a joint problem solving situation. But there's one last thing. Great feedback givers not, uh, not, not, not only can say messages well, but also they ask for feedback regularly. In fact, uh, the research on perceived leadership shows that you shouldn't wait for feedback to be given to you, uh, but like uh, push uh, feedback, you should actively ask for it. And uh, uh, pulling uh, uh, feedback establishes you as a continual learner. So the, so, so the most challenging situations are actually the ones that call for the most skillful feedback, but it doesn't have to be hard. So now that you have this four part formula, you can mix and match and uh, make it work for any difficult conversations.